I think what's happened is we've been kind of, I think as a society uh, uh, wide, we've been duped into the notion that we are living a post-racial, you know, experience. Um, and there is a paradox with the fact that you have a, a black president, but at the same time, you also have a slew of our black men being killed in the street by police. Uh, from uh, Trayvon Martin to uh, Michael Brown um, and to others. Um, and that paradox is where we find ourselves as parents in terms of then how do we educate our children within that spectrum. Um, and I think, I think in some cases millennials are trying to tease all of that out. Um, and I think we're at a, we're, we're at a crossroads now in terms of the level of violence that really exists against, certainly against black men, um, and the ideals that we talk about when we elect someone like President Obama. I'm hopeful. Millennials are fighting a different battle. They're not fighting against men in uh, pointed white hats. They're fighting against implicit bias. They're fighting against uh, uh, their own denial. Uh, in the face of this presidential new reality, but, uh, but they're fighting against privilege, and that's mm -hmm. hard to fight. And so uh, people don't give up power without a fight. Uh, and we're, we're fighting to get a piece of the pie, to grow the pie. Idris, yeah? tell me about your girlfriend. I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> you can just shy. I'm not American Promises is a documentary film that took 13 years. It is uh, an attempt to chronicle our son's educational journey, but it started off as a film about uh, an elite educational environment, and it became something else. Right, because in addition to being a filmmaking team, we're a husband and wife team. So we decided to turn the camera on ourselves, our son and his best friend, and follow their educational path from kindergarten to graduation from high school. What's interesting about the film, it's really a deep dive into the African-American male experience with education. And there are many um, obstacles that we as families confront, that the educational institution confront, and the boys confront that are kind of played out before your eyes. What ended up happening is the film is really more than just, a, you know, a document uh, it provokes conversation, it, um, it is provocative, um, and it really questions, it, 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 it really stimulates the audience to question and self-reflect on their own role, whether it's reflecting on themselves when they were children, or their attitudes as, uh, as parents, and also, you know, their relationship to race and the role that race plays um, in their lives. But what's the provocation? The provocation is life. You know, this is our son uh, growing up from age four, five to, to 18, uh, going through some of the same life issues that we all face, but when you see them raw on camera, uh, it just evokes a powerful emo an emotion. And it's sort of like re-experiencing what, what we went through or what you go through. Right. And uh, we believe that's a powerful stimulus to conversation. I think one of the things that we really have to understand is, uh, is that the time uh, trajectory for these boys is long. And so even though I may have more bumps along the road, uh, if I have faith in the process and give these boys what they need, uh, they will thrive. And so what I'm saying is um, if, if the boy uh, can tolerate uh, some of these obstacles and that we support them through those obstacles, um, if, they can, if they can learn to exist in multiple cultures, to uh, code switch, if you will, uh, they tend to have a better long-term outcome. Well, you know, none of these environments, none of these educational institutions is perfect. There are trade-offs at every point. Um, and there are trade-offs that are often, 
most often based on expectations of who these boys are. And sometimes it doesn't matter if they're in a predominantly black in, uh, uh, educational institution. Some of those same expectations are going to perpetuate it because we all are drinking the same Kool-Aid in terms of what we think about black males or what we think about people who are different from us that's being fed to us every day from the media. So I think that what's really important is not so much how can I avoid my child from having these experiences because it's very hard to do that. Um, it's what do I do when these experiences happen? How do I turn this into, a, uh, into something, into an opportunity for learning and growth for, our, for my child um, and for the teacher involved if it's around expectations? How do we interact in a way where we get to know each other as individuals and, and minimize the impact of what unconscious assumptions, of the role unconscious assumptions play in the classroom? To use the bike riding metaphor, uh, we don't want to stop them from falling off the bike. We want to be there to help them get back up and get back on the bike. And be uh, able to pedal harder. So it's really about unpacking the experiences in a way that's constructive. I mean, are, are you going to give up a thousand points on the, on the, on the SAT uh, so we can have them in this culturally supportive environment? I'm not. I'm going to support my kid culturally at home. I'm going to provide for him in his community, and I'm going to try to get that. And it's not to say that there aren't schools that, you know, kind of balance the two, but there's so few and far between that um, what's really important is for us as parents to know what are these institutions, what am I willing to do as a parent in terms of intervention and advocacy um, that will work in terms of the trade-off. So, so what what I'm suggesting is is that uh, your audience see the film and if they have a little extra time amazon.com or barnes and noble get the book and we spoke to 30 uh, i'm sorry 55 experts nationwide and asked them what they would do to help these boys and girls uh, deal with some of the issues you raised uh, at every age along uh, the developmental spectrum, and uh, and I and I think it it's a, an opportunity for us to 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 deal with the challenge by having the tools that we need to make a, a difference. There's a cultural disconnect between independent schools and African American boys, and the question is why. I hate school. It's bad. It's hard. The problem is focusing on class. After you leave Dalton, where do you go? I really don't want to leave. I don't think it was, frankly, a good match for him. Ah! I'd be better off if I was white. Isn't that true? This is unacceptable. Sit up. It's laziness. Something is wrong with my child. People would say, wow, you're controlling his entire life. Well, I think we weren't controlling enough. Dad is not giving up on you. I'm hard because I want you to be a better man than I am. I think I'm ready for college. I can't take life for granted. This feels so right. She's calling my name. There's nothing you can't do in this world. We back you up all the way. The Triumph Award goes to Shea Summers. This is just the beginning. Even through all the struggles, I feel like I'm going places. You should be proud. Uh, my name is Michelle Stephenson, co-producer and co-director of American Promise. My name is Joe Brewster, and you're watching Real Black.